This is Twit. I think the big headline for everybody was the Apple Watch 4. Uh, they removed the bezel and they say the screen is 30% bigger on the watch. Uh, it's $499 with a cellular co- connection, $399 without it. Uh, speakers now 50% louder. They've moved the microphone to the other side of the watch to minimize echo. The watch back is now ceramic, and Apple says that's going to improve cellular connectivity. Uh, But the thing everybody is talking about had to do with health. Mm -hmm. It has an electrocardiogram feature. Uh, They've put electrodes on the digital crown and on the back of the watch. So you put your finger on the crown, and using those two inputs, the watch figures out the electrical activity in your heart. Uh, This whole process takes 30 seconds, but they've gotten this cleared by uh, by the FDA uh, to provide that ECG data. It gets stored in your health app when you do one of these, and it can be exported as a PDF for your doctor. Um, it also has fall detection. The accelerometer is improved and the gyroscope, so it de- detects involuntary motions. The arms and body, I guess, do very specific things when you fall forward or you slip backwards. And it'll make a call uh, for help if you don't move without within a minute. So, you know, I think Apple laid it out pretty Clearly, that the watch is about connectivity, fitness, and health. Uh, anybody think that the new features are a must-get, and that you know this is really going to change the game for the wearables market? Yeah, this was an interesting moment for me. Um, the morning before, so technically the morning of the the like, oh, it was like two in the morning um, before the Apple event. I went to the ER. Um, I was having some stuff going on with my heart that I hadn't experienced since last year. Uh, so I sort of thought it was over, came back again, uh, went to the the ER and, you know, they got me all checked out and said, ah, oh, yes, the AFib is popping up again. We need to look into this some more. Um, and then, it, I, I sort of tried to make light of the situation by joking about how then Apple was rumored to be announcing a watch that was going to be able to detect AFib and also have ECG and things like that. Um, I think this watch is incredible on for many reasons. Those things obviously are the things that matter most to me. When I went to the ER in December, I shortly afterward upgraded to the Series 3 because there were improved heart rate tracking features and things like that. And it was easy to give my doctor that information and say, hey, here's what my heart's doing. Let's see what's going on. Um, So I absolutely am going to be upgrading to the Series 4. I do want to note, um, as I've talked about this this week and been very excited about it, I've gotten lots of feedback from people who want to tell me all all about uh, 12 lead ECGs and Holter monitors and things like that. It's important to understand that no, a device on your wrist is never going to replace the medical instruments that you are using in the hospital or a Holter monitor that you might take home and use for a week that's monitoring your heart 24 seven. However, this device is better than nothing. And to have this with me everywhere I go is pretty great. So I'm, I'm, quite excited about having these extra heart rate tracking features, but I am certainly not uh, assuming that this is going to serve as a replacement for anything that I can get in the hospital or with my doctor. Well, it's got to be you peace know, I, of mind too. I mean, if, if you're having something with your heart, I mean, it is called <clears throat> the silent killer. So it's scary because you don't know when your heart's uh, you know, out of regular sinus rhythm. And mm-hmm. so having that data, one quick question there, how does the Series 3 already do that? Does it keep a log somewhere? So the Series 3, it of course, it doesn't do the ECG thing. Um, and with watchOS 5, and I think that this next feature is coming later this year, it's going to be better at doing rhythm tracking. So I think it's all like algorithms based. They've just figured those out. They'll pop those in and, you know, it'll be better about tracking. Right now, what the Series 3 does is it just has an improved heart rate sensor over previous models. And so I was using the Series 0 Apple Watch way long time ago. And upgrading to the Series 3 improved that. And it also offers a high heart rate detection. Um, So it's, of course, keeping a log throughout the day. And then it's like, whoa, your heart rate's over blank and you've just been sitting. So it doesn't make sense that your heart rate is like this. You watching a scary movie or is there something going wrong? And for me, that was important because that's what led me to the ER the first time around was having this heart rate that was above 140 and I was doing absolutely nothing. Mm. You, you know, the all those stories that popped out this week of like 
<coughs> concern trolling and like this, you know, Apple uh, claims this is a medical device, but it's not really a medical device. Like that's, I feel like that that was everybody like writing for headlines, but you know, I found it more interesting. Like if you, if you read in beyond the headlines in those stories, like, you know, Apple was very clear that it, and even the FDA in giving them um, the, the clearance for it, made them make it clear that this is not a replacement for uh, actual, you know, doctor's attention or medical care or, or anything like that. But I found it interesting, like, in a way, Apple's doing it right, or, or is it at least doing it methodically? You know what I mean? Like, so this is technically classified as a class two device for, for regulatory purposes. And like a class one medical device is a tongue depressor <laughs> and a class yeah. three is a, an actual pacemaker, right? So I think that actually what the interesting story here is, is that Apple isn't going whole hog into we're, we're making medical devices now. They're, they're creeping in incrementally and they're doing all the steps right. And, they're, and, and, and actually, I think that that'll help them, you know, gain credibility. Um, so that maybe however many years down the road when it can do more serious medical monitoring, um, then th they'll have this track record, record behind them of being methodical and, and, and taking it slowly and doing it the right way. The specific information, uh, they say it's, uh, it's not for people who have heart conditions, that it's for people who are generally considered healthy. Um, and as you mentioned, it's not FDA approved, it's FDA cleared. Uh, mm -hmm. So it, it is, it's a step into the health aspects and the fact that it passively tracks all this and you can access it um, after the fact, kind of a black box, if you will. For, you know, it's, it's great when you're going to your doctor. I was talking to um, a cardiologist at Stanford and he had worked with a lot of the folks who make wearables. And overall, he said that the technology is really accurate. So it's, you know, the calorie counts are all over the map and not very accurate at all, but that the heart rate monitoring is pretty good. And the fact that you can now do that in conjunction with this sinus rhythm and finding out about tachycardia or um, any of the um, AFib that they're talking about, it, it at least gives you data to go to your doctor with. So I'll be the, the opposite of everyone. It's we love you for that. <laughs> <laughs> so the the... Series three tells you if you had a high rate. The the four series will actually tell you now if you have a low rate. That's really nice. Um, but the way Apple presented it, the way regular people consume it, it's FDA approved. Oh, oh my gosh. It, it, people are losing their minds because they don't read and they just hear the way Apple presents things on stage. So unless you're a tech person and you're reading in the articles, people think that it's going to be a solution to some of their problems. I have um, heart problems too. I go to my doctor every three months and yes, I can use my Series 3 watch to give her like a, an average update. But usually when I'm there checking that versus what they're checking is usually not accurate at all, which I find. But again, that's neither here nor there. There's also things like there could be something wrong with the watch. So, you know, I, the dependability of it versus the credibility that Apple gets is what concerns me. The way people just gush all over everything Apple. Again, cleared not really approved. I uh, love to get my hands on one because I, I do take medication. But again, it's not really for me. It's for a healthy person that might need to know something. Because if you're sick, they don't want you relying on this thing at all. You need mm -hmm. to rely on your doctor. So yay, uh, we can do an EKG. Uh, maybe we get a DFib uh, in, in Series 5. Uh, necessitate <laughs> myself. Uh, you know, that. That'd be cool. You know, you, you know what would sell me on this? You know what would get my money off the bat? If it had a glucose reader, if it knew my sugar levels, oh, I would throw somebody to the ditch and spend $1,000 on that watch right now if it tell me glucose. But again, that's what Apple does. They hype everything up, make you feel good about yourself. They're in this series, in this watch, they are ahead of the competition. Bottom line, after all that yelling I just did, they are ahead of everybody else. So at least... <laughs> At least they're a step ahead, everybody. But I'm just saying, don't go dependent on this watch to exactly. wake you up in the middle of the night and say, hey, you having a heart attack, brother? Are you, you dreaming hard? Like, what's <laughs> going on? Wake up. The watch ain't going to save you.